Good afternoon, morning, evening, whatever time it is you're watching this, goodness to you. I'm Cappy from Always in Stitches in Noblesville, and I'm so excited to get to show you what's new in the shop. Those of you who follow and like us, you probably noticed we weren't there last week. My apologies, but thank you for noticing. We actually had some, you know, creepy, crud, nasty bugs going through our staff, and we were down four or five people. It was several. And so we were just kind of like, you know, trying to get it all done and not getting it all done. And so my apologies that you didn't get to see us, but here we are. So, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder was what Peter said that, you know, if we were there all the time, you guys might not appreciate it as much as if we're gone for a week. So we're back. Luckily, everybody's on the mend. It was just that creepy crud, man. I, it's Indiana. If you've ever been to Indiana, long about after Thanksgiving, everybody starts getting this nasty, hacky, slimy cough. And we just have to get a really good cold break in the weather for it to go away. And guess what's happening Thursday? What? Snow! Is it is it going to be a snowpocalypse? I think, I think it's a snowpocalypse enough that we might have a white Christmas, which is exciting to me because if there's ever a Chris, a thing you want at Christmas, it's a white Christmas. So if, if it could do what it wanted, like Christmas Eve at about 10 o'clock, it would start these big, flat, fat, fluffy snowflakes. And then Christmas morning, you wake up to like two feet of snow. And then at two in the afternoon, it turns 70 degrees and it all melts. Can I order that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I can order it. it yes, it's time for you to put in your order. I, <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, we're expecting, and they don't know. They just make it up. They Snowmageddon. Pretend. Here Snow we Mageddon. come. Yeah, I was in Get the blizzard. Get my knitting ready. <laughs> yeah, stitching, stitching, stitching. I was in the blizzard of 76. I remember it in Indiana, and it was... Seventy eight. Was it in seventy eight? The 78. peanut gallery tells me it was are you sure it wasn't seventy six? Yes. Oh, I was one, I remember. Oh, you were one. Whatever. Oh gosh. Now I feel old. Okay, it was seventy eight, seventy six, seventy eight. They run together when you reach a certain age. Anyway, so what's new? Well, I want to show you something. Peter's gonna show you how so just because you like to know what goes on in the background. When inventory comes in the back, Nancy, who, our birthday girl, our birthday girl today is Nancy. So her name is Nancy Reed. And shout out to Nancy. If you see her, wish her happy birthday. And we have sung to her today. We have announced it over the PA. We have, we, we are just trying to make her feel warm and fuzzy. And she's trying to hide her face from us at this point. But she's part of our peanut gallery and it's her birthday. So anyway, what Nancy does when inventory comes in, it comes in boxes, which is kind of fun. And then it all goes on these carts. We've got like four or five of these carts and they fuss over them. It's really kind of funny. There's this big cart wars going on and um, everything gets put on these carts and they get barcodes. So that's what you're looking at here. And so to show you what's new, this is, this is so new. It doesn't even have the barcodes on it yet. But with, I thought, well, what fun. And this is why none of our staff makes any money because these cards come out and then the staff has to put the barcodes on the stuff and as they're putting the barcodes on, they buy everything that's on the cart. We shop as we barcode they it. They do shop it. as they barcode And it's even worse when you're in the back room because oh, sometimes geez. it I, doesn't We even. see it actually as Nancy, okay, where my desk is, is I am behind and to the side of Nancy. I can literally see every box she opens. And so if she opens something that I like, I can see it as she's, Checking it in. Yeah. Danger. It is dangerous. Uh. Warning, warning, Will Robinson, because we are just all over there going, what's in the box? What's in the box? And so Nancy has this little thing where she won't let anybody open the box but Nancy because when we get in and we're like a bunch of kids in the toy box and we mess it up and then she can't figure out what goes where. And, and I get her reasoning, but, but we just can't hardly wait. It's like Christmas every day for us. So anyway, this is a cart that just came in and it's getting ready to go out. So sometimes what's on here are reorders. Like this pattern, which I don't care how long we've been doing it. This is still a stinking cute pattern. I think I Everybody's made the sample. Everybody's been making this. I know. It's just really fun. It's called Fresh Eggs. And so there'll be reorders on here. There'll be new stuff on here. You know, you never quite know. But, you know, that's when, gosh, we've ordered six patterns. And so then the staff, they get to put the barcodes on it. And, you know... Sometimes we have to print an extra barcode or you get it out there and there's too many barcodes because somebody picked one up in the back. And 
But anyway, this is our inventory. So I'm just going to show you what's on this cart because I can and it will be fun. So this is pounce powder. If you haven't used this pounce powder before, you will want to. You should. It's very nice. It's a quilt pounce powder. It comes in, this is the white, which I think is the one that irons off. And then the blue, which is the same product, but it's a different color. See how that's blue? That one brushes off. So you don't want to mix them up because if you iron it, then it's, I think it gets like permanently there. But that's pounce powder. This is the, how new can this be? This hasn't even hit the floor, people. This is so new, it's not even out yet. Um, what do we got here? Crochet lock. Toothbrush. <laughs> it does look like a toothbrush. Oh! It's oh, a crochet hook with a light. It lights up and you can crochet with it. You know what this would be good Whoa. for? Stocking stuffer. Crochet That would in be the perfect. Dark. Well, no, you know what? When you're what, riding uh, in the car to yeah. drive somewhere and you want to knit or crochet yeah. or whatever, that's a pain in the neck because the, the driver doesn't want you turning on that overhead light. Okay, my driver doesn't want me turning on that overhead <laughs> light. And so this would be perfect for that. I what love I, it. I love it. That's a great little stocking stuff. We should, you know what? Are they expensive? Um, they're $6.99. That's not bad at all. We might have to surprise our crochet teacher with one. <gasps> oh, that's So she can idea. test drive it. I hope she doesn't watch this because then she'll know. Okay, here's a box. What's in the box? Oh, these are needles. Meh, not so exciting. I'm not gonna look at those. Um, okay, these are fun. This is something that you may not have seen before. You know that we have. So this is little plastic bobbins to put your floss on. So if you have, um, well, there's a, there's a couple reasons. You can use it when you're doing like needle work um, for your floss. Like if you're doing punch needle, if you're doing cross stitch, it will hold your floss rather than having it in a skein and getting all pulled when you unwind it. Um, the other thing is, my husband actually uses these because he does fly tying. Is that right, Peter? Peter uh -huh. does too, so he knows what he's talking about. Fly tying. And so he sometimes needs thread, but he doesn't need a whole lot. So that's what he'll put it on those kind of things too. These little bobbin flossers are nice. They're and somebody ordered them for something else the other day, and I was and I don't remember what it was, but it was weird. But anyway, those are fun. Okay, these are cool. Okay, it's called a screw stack container. That's not very interesting. I want to say it in French. Do you think that's French? Is it Boites Impialiers? I have no idea. I do I not don't speak know. French. I don't, I don't either. But I like that better than screw stack canisters. <laughs> it just sounds more fun, doesn't it? Sound more fun? Okay, so these are little nesting, and the top is the bottom for the next one. That's how these work. Let me tell you, plan B, you know what else these are good for? What? First of all, stocking stuffer. Second of all, jewelry when you travel. Oh. Okay, because I'm like, and I'm not wearing much jewelry today, but I'm kind of a jewelry hound. And when you travel, sometimes you want your jewelry to stay separate or whatever. So I put like my earrings and necklace in one and the next, and so then I've got four sets of jewelry to change. And, I, and it stays together. So there you go. Those would be good for knitters for all the stitch markers. Oh, yes. If they have like a lot of stitch markers. Stitch markers. Yeah, they've got this that you're going to put for craft. It says craft and bead storage. But yeah, um, zipper heads. Because I always change my zipper heads. I could sort my zipper heads kind of by color. Hey, that's a good idea for yeah. bags. For my bags. Yeah. So yeah, zipper heads are good. Peanut galleries winding up in back. Just pay no attention to what's going on back there. Okay, this is a color wheel. This is another good tool. If you aren't working with a color wheel when making your quilts, um, this is very helpful because you can learn what colors are going to make other colors pop. For instance, when you put these colors together, they're going to um, they're going to kind of blend. When you put colors opposite each other, they're going to pop. Um, it just there's a whole color theory about how to make colors look really cool in your quilts, and that's what this is about. So this is the Color Mixing Guide Pocket Wheel. Handy tool to have. Um, you can always just buy the line of fabric, and that solves the whole problem. But if you want to start mixing and matching, this is a tool you're going to want. Look at my table getting full. I love it. Okay, here's another, pool, another fun tool. This is from Sew Line. It's a fabric glue pen. Oh, my goodness. You know I wear these out, baby. Yeah. These are... Um, for English paper piecing, wouldn't be without it. No other way to do it but with this pin because it's refillable and it doesn't stay permanent. The other thing I love this for is putting in zippers so I can run, 
a little bit of glue on each side of my zipper when I'm going to glue my zipper down before I'm going to sew it in. Um, gosh, how many, how many places can you not use this glue pen? There's lots of times you need to stick things together that you can't use pins or even binder clips. I'll use this when I'm working with leather or when I'm working with cork because sometimes you want to hold that together but you don't want to use a pin in that because it's going to make a permanent hole. Well, yeah, so well. I love my glue, glue pins. They're my favorite little toy. And another pattern, bobbles. Oh, this is, this is one written by our very own Jennifer who works here. And this goes with an island batik fabric that we just got in. Hi, so. and I'm Jennifer. <laughs> um, and this is my pattern that Cappy just showed you and another pattern. Uh, we've got two patterns in for this lovely collection by Island Batik. It's called Midnight Glow. And as you can see, it's got lots of purples and some reds, some blues, and some golds. Um, by the way, we have um, two and a half inch strips for the collection and also 10 inch squares for the collection. Um, and let me show you one of the quilts that we have the pattern for. Again, we have uh, bobbles, which is very fast and easy to make. Um, and you can do it with any pattern, I mean any collection you want, but this one happens to be in the Island Batik collection. Um, and then this one is called Starburst, and um, you might have seen, a. have got a, another version of it in my office right now, but I remade it in this collection because I liked it so much. And here's what it looks like. Again, simple, simple blocks as you can see, but the colors really pop, I think. In the uh, kind of, I designed it to kind of have a light center going out to a dark edges. And you can see the golds and the reds and the purples in that. Again, this one's called Starburst, and the other one is called Bobbles. Okay, now the rest of the stuff on here is fabric, so this is going to go pretty quick. This line just got here as Who is it? This is Betsy Chuchian. And actually, the fabric, I don't Wait, think, has arrived. Zoom in? Okay. The fabric has not arrived, and I will tell you right out, we did not buy all 32 bolts in this line. But I did buy the 20 main ones, so you'll get a nice little assortment of them. Oh, wow. Isn't that stunning? Yeah. She does pretty fabric. Look at that piece. I, I love hope that's when I got I love her shading. I do, too. I love how um, it's tonal. And you know what's really fun is she's popped it off of this beige. Isn't that fun? Where? The beige with the blue. See the beigey, oh, brownie uh -huh. so it's cream? Uh-huh. I like that it's kind of got a colorway going on. Let's see if the jelly roll, see what the jelly roll looks like. Oh, she hadn't even opened them. See, this is how they come. See, it's just like Christmas. We get to open them. So there you can see the jelly roll. There you can really see the colors. See how it goes from that that cheddar almost not really cheddar gold. it's golden gold it's a like gold gorgeous next to that blue gold in the oh, beige look at those neutrals. yeah great neutrals beiges browns there's betsy's sweet little face we're going to turn around to get to her and then the creams and the blues and they go into a deeper blue like i said there's 32 bolts in the entire line we get, what we'll get will be about 20 of them is so, that because sometimes there's so many so many bolts that you just narrow it down for the quilter to make it easier to decide like I cracked that one. Um, you pick us an assortment of like different scale or size prints and different colors and stuff like that. Yeah. So here's the truth. So folks. it's not like so overwhelming for somebody yeah. to make a quilt. We have well over 5,000 bolts of fabric in our store. And if I bought the big lines every time and bought all 32 or 42 bolts in a line, like CAFE is, CAFE is a fabulous, prolific designer, but the problem is his his collections will have 40 and 50 bolts in them. I mean, they're just, they're so big. And so I can't buy everything. So rather than buy everything, we buy a little bit of lots of things. So you can have a little bit. And, you know, if you really see a piece and you're like, I've got to have that piece of fabric out of that collection and we don't have it, we can sometimes order it. But, but the truth is there's just more fabric out there than what I can carry. <laughs> Much as I would love to carry every single piece, because I can tell you when it's time to pick fabric, it ain't easy. It's just hard to to get what we want and get everything we want. But we try to get a good assortment. 
you know. Um, this one is another one from Moda. This one is, who is this? Oh, this is to go with, um, uh, I think this goes with Euphoria. I'm 99% sure this goes with Euphoria. Yes, so we showed you this in our last What's New video, and we had the fabric on the bolt. Now we have the charms and the jelly rolls. I'm guessing we didn't buy layers because there's no layers here. Oh, nope, there's the layers underneath there, so we also have the layer cakes. Um, so, and this is what happens sometimes with fabric. It doesn't all come at the same time. So we get the charms and the layers before we get the fabric, or we get the fabric before we get the charms and the layers. I'm going to get a layer cake out here and show you. I am just loving this. We have, this is the Create Joy Project, and we've had her fabric before, and it literally sold out. We had to reorder. It sold so quickly. You're just getting a postage stamp of the piece, but boy, is it pretty. She's a delightful, delightful lady. We got to meet her at market and chat with her a little bit. She was so touched to know how much you guys like her fabric, and we we shared with her how much. This has got that great stripe that I showed you. I love that. So, And what comes with that is this. So here's your panel. Isn't that pretty? Wow. And it's, it's what's called a convenience panel. They don't call them cheater panels This is panels different anymore. than the ones we've had before. The ones we've had before haven't been this big. No. Her Create Joy Bloom panels. Yeah. This one's 60 by 80. This is super bloom. And it's, and it's not, it's a little more wow. graphic. It is. Is it glare off of it? There we go. Okay. So it's a little more graphic in that it's not as freeform, I think. It's got more symmetry than her previous panel did. I really love it. I think it's very I'd like pretty. To put that on the back of a quilt. Yeah, it would make a great back. And Moda Fabric always has such a good hand to it, so that would make a great back. That's a great idea. Okay, and then this one, um, this is, you know, sports can be hard to find. So looky here. Dirt and bling, it's a softball thing. <laughs> I love it. That's funny. Let me take it out of the wrapper. See, that's the other thing. It's all wrapped up and stuff. Look how pretty that is. So we've not had softball fabric before. I love that it has women on it too, not just men. So that's nice because it kind of crosses over. Fast pitch, softball, never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. Boy, that's just true in everything, isn't it? It is. So there you go. That's going to be a fun fabric for those of you who are making quilts for Christmas and you're looking for something for somebody. And then this one, I'm going to have to put this stuff back over here. So Peter, because this is, we ordered this fabric for Peter. Honestly, we did. Oh, it's amazing. We did. We ordered I've already it. named half the horses on the prints. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what's in it. Yeah. yeah. He's already he's already claimed this one. And um, we tried to order stuff to match what everybody's taste is in the shop. Because, you know, you got 25 people working here. And you figure if you buy something that each person likes, look at the diversity we'll get just by doing it that way. But look how pretty these horses are. Oh, See, he she's going to open the open bolt. It. I'm going to open it up. I haven't seen it out of the saran wrap or the cellophane or what, how, however yeah, you call it. Yeah, we got it. horseshoes. We got a little bit of horseshoes. And we have a little bit of nine shooters, six shooters. I don't know. Six shooters. Six shooters, okay. A little bit of guns. And then look at these horses. These are just hanging out horses. Instead of on a background, it looks like they're just standing in a field. I'm making a hot mess. Ah, there we go. Look how pretty they are. That, are they upside down? Nope. Okay. Look how pretty. So you got those people that like horses. Here we go. Love it. Love some horse fabric. So we and they look, actually look like horses. They do actually look like horses. And they're not cartoony. They're not scary. So that's a cart. That's, that's how it comes out. Um, <laughs> they do... Um, price this fabric out on the sales floor. Sometimes, sometimes we have our orders department do it. We kind of like for the orders department to process it just because then when they, when you call them, they know what we have. But when we, well, oh, it's flying all over the place. <laughs> but when we get super busy, sometimes we just have to like, okay, who can price the stuff and get it out? Because our goal is within 24 hours of it hitting the back door, we want it to hit the floor. 24 hours from floor to door. That's our goal. It doesn't always happen, I'll tell you the truth. Just because we get so busy, you know. And especially when we have, like, you know, 
contagious getting or whatever you want to call it. We were all, we were having the creepy crud floating around back here. So um, we were washing our hands and doing all the things we're supposed to do. Okay, that's one bolt. There's going to be another one that Peter's going to plug in here that's the 30s line. We're going to look at that too. So here's the other fabric that I just mentioned I wanted you to see, and that is this new 30s print. I told you about Jennifer. We had one of her patterns. You're going to see it here in just a minute. I'm not sure if it was after or before or after I said it, but anyway, you're going to see one of Jennifer's patterns. She's a pattern writer. She also is our orders department person. So when you call and say, I need to talk to Jennifer, this is her. You get to see her. Um, there's several people working in that department, but she's here primarily Mondays and Fridays. So what one of the things she gets to do is all the stuff that's on the cart she gets to put the price tags on it not always sometimes yeah. we get backed up and yeah. we share that blessing yes yeah <laughs> and then we all try not to buy it um, yeah oh my gosh you nobody that works here makes any money yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just not a good place to work if you want to make money fabric. I work, we'll work for we fabric. work for fabric we all work for fabric but this line we haven't received a 30s line in a while Honestly, I haven't seen a 30s line that I liked for a while. Not that, I mean, every piece of fabric's beautiful, but occasionally you get some and you're like, not so much. Yeah. But this 30s line just really spoke to me. Yeah. I, I thought it was, it, it had enough modern mm -hmm. at the same time it had some reference back to old style stuff. Yeah, that's 30s what I was stuff. thinking. I was like, well, it's not true 30s reproductions no. but it has the the 30s colorways and stuff and it's so it's kind of a cross between modern and 30s. yeah it's got a nice vibe to it's it really neat they're not true i mean i don't think that's that's probably not the true green of the old 30s stuff if you're trying to match but it's going to be close enough it would blend mm -hmm. i think you could play with it um this is a fat quarter set that that one of our uh employees is getting <laughs> Because that's what happens. Because that's what we do. Because <laughs> that's what they do. So that gives you a feel of the whole colorway. We've also got a kit coming. This is going to be the kit. And again, we know we've got two employees buying this kit. <laughs> I, that will be so pretty. It will. I think it, it's so going to pretty in this. be really fun as far as the scrappiness to it. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure this does the justice to how pretty this is. I don't think it does either. And, you know, look at all these neutrals. This is this is one of the things that really kind of excited me about this line, mm -hmm. is look how many neutrals in in a 30s print. You can never wow. really find... No, you can't. So that is... Uh, just, just that alone would yep. be a reason to stop by and make sure you grab some of this. It would, because so many times there are all these brights and you can't mm -hmm. find those backgrounds. You can't backgrounds. find anything to really go... You can't find the background. It. So we've got... 10 inch squares. They're not layer cakes unless they're Mona. They're calling them, yeah, 10 inch squares. These are called, these are actually called charm squares. <gasps> well, there you go. And then this is a jelly roll. So these are going to be your two and a half inch strips, which I love. Mm -hmm. And these do really make, um, I would make a jelly roll rug out of this. Oh, yeah. That'd be because great. that 30s print would really lend to a cute jelly roll rug because that was kind of the rugs they had then. Um, charms. Can't go wrong with that. And there goes the phone. Oh, Dawn's going to get it. But she'll go, Jennifer, you have a call. And 10 inch squares. So there you go. Before she has to take that call, we'll say ta ta. Bye. And on to the rest of the video. The next thing I want to talk to you about is our shop hours. So, holidays coming. You're going to see this before Christmas. I think you should see it before Christmas. Hopefully, you'll see it today. Hopefully, you'll see it yet today. Um, we will be closed Christmas Eve, which is Saturday, December 24th. So uh, get all your shopping done before. A lot of you are online. That's great. Gift cards are great to buy online because they come directly to you and you can pop them in an envelope. You could even buy a gift certificate Christmas Day and still put it in an envelope and get it to the person because that's how quickly the email comes out on that. So don't wait that long. But if you did. <laughs> um, so... December 24th, which is a Saturday, we will be closed. We're always closed on Sunday. That's just a given. So we will be closed Christmas Day. December 26th, which is a Monday, a lot of places are going to be closed to observe the holiday. We will not. We will be open December 26th. We'll also be open New Year's Eve, the 31st, until 4.30, our regular time. And, of course, then we're closed on Sunday, which happens to be New Year's Day. And then we'll reopen January 2nd with our regular hours. So the only time we're really closed this holiday, the next couple weeks, is Saturday the 24th because the rest of them should be okay. Now, Snowmageddon happens, and we have to close for some reason. We will put that on our Facebook page. We put that on our um, 
in our newsletter, we'll send out an email blast, and that's all that will be in that content. We'll just say that we're closed. And it also goes on the front of our website. So if you're thinking about coming in and the weather hits, you might check with us first before coming in. And you can always call the shop, too. So that's about shop hours. Okay, I have to give you a joke because, you know, our little Maggie is so stinky cute. Here's our newest Maggie joke. Peter, you'll have to read it because I can't read okay. it in the back. What would you call Santa if he raised cattle? Hold on, it's out of focus now. Okay, get of it in focus. I don't know what happened there. I decided not to focus on the joke. Okay, it would be a Jolly Rancher. It would be a Jolly Rancher. And that was from a customer that actually brought the joke in for Maggie. Yeah. I love it. Because Maggie's our joke girl. And this is from a customer. Her name was Jenny. So here's, <laughs> here's, this is, this is. So turning. now it's starting to catch on. It is. And it's the dumb, it's the dumb, silly jokes. It's, we don't want the jokes that are naughty that we have to call HR and have them come in and deal with you. We want funny, silly jokes. We want jokes we can tell to the grandkids. One of the things Lenine does, who owns our store, is she sends dorky jokes to her grandkids just to make them roll their eyes all the time and it's hysterical she gets she loves their reactions so we love dorky silly jokes and um what we'd like you to do is submit them so that's going to be your question in the comments this this week you know each time we have something you're supposed to comment on and we pick a winner that's what i want to hear your dumb dad jokes just your silly stupid dad jokes that everybody always laughs at that you're like oh makes you roll your eyes so we want dad jokes because we're going to give them to maggie to post around the store we had a customer i guess come in last week and and the, the only reason he was here was just to walk around and read maggie's jokes oh. is that hysterical so we love our maggie she's here on saturdays usually so if you want to come meet maggie who writes our dumb dad jokes and is, we're going to submit all these and put them in our mailbox and let her pick them and spread them out. So do that. Let us know who sent them. Okay. That was one thing. Um, the other thing is when the December, first week of December started, we had a sale every week. And we did, I don't remember what we did first. We did, first week was yarn. Oh, yeah. And that floss. Yes, yarn floss. and floss. And then this week... This, or the next week, the next I don't week, remember. The next week was cross-stitch. That's the week you weren't here. Yeah. So that was okay. cross-stitch patterns. Okay, buy cross two, patterns. get one free. Yes. So buy two, you get the third pattern free. And then this week, so those oh, two... Oh, I don't even know what this week is. I know. Okay. So this week, it's buy two patterns in the wool or punch needle department and get a third pattern free. I got the peanut gallery in the back waving at me. Hey, peanut gallery. That's that's Brett. He's married to Lenine, who owns the store. Um, Y'all can't see him, but he was doing this to me because, you know, he's a nice guy. Um, so this week, it's buy two, get the third one free in wool and punch needle patterns. Wow, now, that's actually an amazing deal because in the wool department, they have, like, the wool ornament series. They have those little ones where you change out the center. Yes, the books. And so there's, like, a lot of ornament or a lot of centerpieces. I think I'm thinking of home or something where the O is yes. changes out. That's a really good deal. That's a good deal. Now it doesn't include anything that has the pattern with the materials to make it. That's a kit. That's not a pattern. These are just patterns alone. Here's the other cool part. A lot of the wool patterns could transfer to punch needle. Am I right, Don, or not? Definitely. Definitely. Don says yes. And if Don says yes, it's true. So if you, so we're saying wool and punch needle, knowing that they kind of cross over. But a lot of those wool patterns would make great punch needle patterns. So if you watched her punch needle thing and you're like, I really want to do punch needle, this would be a chance to get some patterns. Still time to stock them in the stuffing. Wait a minute. Stock them in the stuffing. Stock them in, to stuff them <laughs> Wait, in the stocking. Why are we having stuffing? Oh gosh, that's <laughs> you Thanksgiving. You stuff the stocking. We got the wrong thing. Stuff the stocking. Well, and and that brings me to this stuffing stocking. the stocking. To stuffing a stock. To stocking the stuffing. Stock, I kind of like that stocking. Stocking the stuffing. the stuffing. You know, you do like to say things backwards. I do. I say. I do say. Like, let's make like a a, 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 a head with its chicken off. Like, you know, you know, make like a tree and leave, make like a something. You know how they all say something? We'll take one, the end of one, and put it on the end of another. We do that. It, it, you really need to spend a day in the back room if you want to hear con calamity and craziness because it's a little cuckoo back here. We are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But anyway, so this is, we're going to stack this stuffing. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I told you I wanted to hear 
what do you put in your stockings? And you guys was such a great help because I had to do like <laughs> nine stockings and I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. But our winner this week is going to be Judy Otis. And Judy's in here all the time taking all kinds of different classes. But I loved her answer. She suggested toothpaste, dental floss, and mints. So my question to Judy is, are you married to a dentist? Because, you know, everybody wants to be a dentist. Not everybody wants to be an elf, but everybody wants to be a dentist. So anyhow, Judy Otis, this is your prize. And you will just simply need to come to the store and say, I want my prize, and you can have it. And to give away our next prize, which I'm going to show you what the giveaway is going to be for that in a minute, um, we're going to ask the question. What was the question I said? Joke. Joke. Oh, yeah. Tell a joke. Give us a joke. Give us a give bag us a joke. joke. So this is, for those of you who are still waiting to do your Christmas stocking, I have, this is like a Mary Poppins box. See, Peter didn't even know. No. He, I, he normally like preps, so he knows. But I just didn't. This box is full of goodies o stocking stuffers. Whoa. So this is a little sewing pouch. Look how cute this is. It's fuzzy. It's soft. I, we, we're back to needing touch of vision here because it's soft. Great little pocket. Perfect little stocking stuffer. Don't you love that? I do. Love that. Okay, this, <laughs> this takes an army to pick it up. I love my Zirkle. You know what? It, can you tell what it is? Um, it is a refrigerator. It's magnet. a refrigerator magnet. It's a dang heavy refrigerator magnet. This is this is a magnet for pins, and I love it. I love 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 it because it's it's like the round ones that, but this one's really heavy. My round one oh, I've knocked off. Oh, you can't knock. Oh yes, it's gonna you, stay put. You cannot. This thing, I, I don't know what it weighs, but it's heavy. It's heavy, and I love my circle. This is my mini stash and store. I think you've seen Dawn use one of these in her videos. I love my stash and store. All kinds of little tools will squeeze down in here. I have it in this size. I have it a medium and I have a large. I've got three of these. I've got one on my sewing table, one on my cutting table, and one on my um, sewing machine or my ironing board, I mean. So I love these. They're just perfect for sticking stuff. All your pencils and tools. Oh, here's what it looks like. See there, they've got a picture of it with the stuff stuck in it. And it'll hold everything. I've got one for my serger. It's very cool. Love that. So that's a good one. Then, okay, this is kind of a random thing that we carry. But we have been sucking this down for the <laughs> last couple weeks around here. Because you know honey is a natural antibiotic. And it will help you. Matter of fact, one of the people that were ill, the doctor said, have honey and lemon to help with your cough. So these are little honey packets. These are perfect for stockings. Matter of fact, I didn't get them this year for my peeps. I need to get them. Still got time. Still got time. So they're three ninety nine for this little thing. This comes from the Baston Honey Farm. They are a beekeeper that's in Central Indiana, and he went to high school with Lenine back in the Dark Ages, and so they're good friends. And we carry his honey, and so you can buy it in little things. And they also have, and this is to die for. Have you yes. had the creamed honey? Yes. Yeah, Peter's a, a honey aficionado, so and it comes with cinnamon or without cinnamon. And what did I get? This you is have without. It without cinnamon. It is it amazing. Is yummy. It, this Christmas morning oh, to have this spread on Spread it your, on an English muffin. Yeah. Spread it. Just spread it on a spoon and eat it. <laughs> just put your finger in the jar. Take your finger. No, please don't do that. That's contagious. You said it was antibacterial, well, Cappy. Yeah, okay. It's not like, <laughs> like a, a hand wash. But, oh, it's not like a hand wash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. This is what we live with. Okay. Um, and then these, somebody said stockings get socks which i love i have these socks and they're the most comfortable they wear great these are little the featherweight shop these actually come from the moda company i think but these have bobbins on them and they say featherweight shop they're just fun again great stocking stuffer 50 notions here you go usb storage this is a good little thing to put in a stocking too is a, a storage a usb thumb drive in the shape of a sewing it's machine. It's the shape like a sewing machine. Isn't that fun? And I think, if I remember right, this ends what pulls off. This oh, whole sewing machine cool. is just like just decorative, and the USB is That's actually inside neat. there. Yeah, isn't that fun? Good stocking stuffer for those ladies who are looking. Now, here's the thing. If you can't get in the store, call our orders department, because, you know, they love to help you over the phone, and they're really good at it. Um, and these, I just think these are cool. This would be really nice for my stocking if somebody's watching. Um, these are earrings. 
and they're tape measures. And it's like an actual, it looks like an actual piece of a tape measure has been put in there and painted. I think it's like oh, legit. that is cool. That Isn't is that cool? Legit. Now, 25 would be my age. No, not really. <laughs> I wish. No, I don't. Actually, I don't want to go back. It'd be horrible. Um, okay. And then these, look at these buttons. I've been wondering what those are exactly. Well, I was too. You, they're coasters. Oh, that makes sense. Button coasters, a four pack. But you know what? I think they'd be kind of cool put in a like a picture frame and just put on like fabric, just one, two, three, four, just like on a picture frame and just kind of hang in your sewing room. Maybe take some big yarn and run through it and make like different designs through the holes. I don't That'd know. That'd be neat. I actually like that I idea. got more time on my hand than I know what to do with. And then this is the best thing. This is a little, it's called a jotter. I think that's an English term. A jotter? Because we would call it a notepad. But I think the English people must call them jotters. Lenine, Lenine, come over here and look at these fun things you buy. Here's, here comes our peanut gallery, Lenine. Did you see these coasters? Did you order the coasters, Lenine? Oh, well, they're really cool. They're Annie's button coasters. I think they're fun. Yeah. Very fun. She's she's not seeing the humor. Okay. Peanut gallery. We can't help them. So this is a, called a jotter. Is what it's called. Always in stitches jotter. And I... They come out of Kansas, though. Do you think in huh. Kansas they call it a jotter? We should call the company now. We should call the company. Lawrence, Kansas. Anyway, they call it a jotter, and it's it's just a little ring thing. I keep one of these in my purse. It's great because, you know, I seem to always need to write something and leave a note. Like, I just wrecked my car into your car, so here's a note under your, <laughs> window, so, under your windshield wiper. Or I accidentally uh, reached over, or I accidentally took up some of the space on your side of the sewing table at, yeah, the, at, the, at the quilt retreat. Yeah, I had I had to leave it, lots leave of notes out, for poor Dawn out. when we went to the sewing retreat together. We had we had issues with our glue tape keeping us separated. Well, I had it. I was I tried, <laughs> but I'm a little messy. Y'all know I'm a little messy. But anyway, so that's the jotter. That's a cool thing, and that's actually the. Can you believe all that fit in there? I have no idea how you did that. I don't know either. I was lucky. Okay, and then one more piece of fabric back here. I forgot to show you this one. This one, we'll have to, you'll have to find sound, side effects for this. It's whale song. <laughs> you, ever heard, you ever heard the whale song yeah. stuff? They sound like they're hurting. I think... <laughs> I think... I don't know, but if you've ever heard a whale song, they don't sound like they're... I mean, they might, it sounds good to another whale, apparently, because, you know, they have more whales because they sing to each other. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, this is called Whale Song, and this is such a pretty quilt. I don't know if he can zero in on the picture. We've made a kit out of it. It's a $76.99 quilt kit, which is not a bad price at all for a quilt kit. It would probably make a pretty wall hanging, too. I'm going to guess at that price point, it's not huge. It would be big enough to hang on a wall. But the fabric is just so pretty. And I picked the one that has the whale on it. And, you know, the, the marine biologist would know which whale it is. A whale is a whale, and it has a big tail. That's all I can tell you. I don't know. That was kind of fun. I didn't know. I, that just came out of my head. You're having um, a whale of a good time over I'm having here. a whale of a good time with that one. I think this one is called an orca whale. I do think that's an orca whale. There's a, do you know there's a shark whale, a whale shark, a whale shark that's like one of the biggest things, I saw this because I was watching Discovery yesterday, one of the biggest fish in the sea is called a whale shark, and it is like a shark, but it doesn't have teeth. Huh. I know. Wackadoo, I know weird stuff. Anyway, but look at these, look at this piece. Now, th look how skinny this is. Somebody else is in love with this too. Yeah, so they are. let me tell you how this works. When you get to a bolt that's this thin, if there's three yards or more on it and you buy the whole bolt, we give you 30% off when it's regular price. What? Seriously. And if there's less than three yards, you get 20% off. So look for skinny bolts because you can buy them cheap. And then look at the words. Ooh, that's I love cool. it. Earth Bay, I think it says Earth Bay, white, three, I can't read upside down. Anyway, there's words. They say stuff about fishes in the sea and all that stuff. Okay, I think, let me look at my list. Where'd my list go? Give me my list. Here's my list. Oh, Deborah's Nativity Tree Skirt. I want to talk about this. So if you have an embroidery machine and you're like, I need to make a project with my embroidery machine. 
Deborah is doing a series starting in 2023, and I don't have a picture of it yet because she's still working on the sample, but it's a nativity tree skirt. Nativity tree skirt. I'm not sure where to put the emphasis on which syllable, but in any case, it's a, it's a tree skirt, and it's really cool. Go to our website. Peter will put the link in. If you've got an embroidery machine, this is a lecture class, so you don't have to drag your machine in, but she's going to go over each class how to make it, and I think it's going to be a fun, fun project for you. So if you're looking for something to do with your embroidery machine, I think it's a good start. And then, um, I told you our winner. I told you our shop hours. I told you our sale. That's everything on my list. Okay, so I guess the only other thing to say is I hope you have a super Merry Christmas. If you're getting to watch this and you're sitting in the snowstorm thinking this place is Looney Tune, we are. The answer is yes. But I hope you're getting to stitch wherever you are, whatever time of the day it is for you. And we're so glad you watch and follow us. If you don't follow us, follow us, like us, do all those things so that you get notification when our um, videos come up. We're going to try to do better and not get sick. We're all washing our hands and taking our vitamins and eating healthy and getting plenty of rest. And you need to do the same because it's that time of year where those ookie okay. bugs sneak around. So I hope you have a great day. We look forward to talking to you. And our next video will be for, well, it'll okay. still be in 2022. So we got two more. We're almost in 2023. So I can't say see you next year yet, but I will in the next one. So stay tuned for that. All right? Happy stitching.